on the eve of world tourism day at a time when we are really struggling with our tourism numbers and at rare we thought it's a great initiative to highlight experiences which is really not something that india is known for however these experiences really really make something very tangible and something very very important by allowing uh, travelers uh, to explore the contours of the country in very very special ways assam bengal has been one of the pioneers in bringing river cruising to india they started off way back in 2003 uh, when the whole idea of river cruising in india did not exist very very niche and focused on both cultural and venture experiences today we have with us executive director also looking after creative and marketing for assam bengal navigation the young and very very articulate antara with us uh, to talk about uh, the assam bengal navigation experience and how this forms a part of a journey in india uh, from uh, the river ships uh, gliding along these rivers how you can touch and uh, get close to villages which you may often miss if you are on a road journey welcome antara uh, a pleasure to see you as always so uh, did i say it right does river cruising allow you to look at some of the smaller towns and villages along the river absolutely you couldn't have said it better that's the beauty of river cruising in comparison to an ocean cruise so most people have drifted away from this ocean cruise experience to have a much more intimate experience of countries and cultures as they're going and discovering the iconic rivers worldwide and in india the iconic rivers be in the two himalayan rivers the ganges and the brahmaputra india obviously is a very new comer in this market having started in 2003 we are the pioneers of river cruising in india in the indian subcontinent so it's only been 17 years whereas the amazon the nile the yang state they have been iconic uh, from the past in the world tourism market and of course the european rivers all offering such variety of experiences and the first boat was one of the old boats that was repurposed for a cruise ship right yes. having started in assam nobody knew how to build a passenger ship so when we approached the stakeholders involved and the government to introduce this very new concept in india they thought we were starting a ferry service so they didn't understand the concept of a river cruise especially not one that passengers would stay in for 7 nights or 10 nights So we went hunting in the old we chose one that stood out to us because of its small intimate size and because it had the steel bearings still uh, made in Sheffield in the UK and the engine had come from Germany so we knew it would be of a certain quality but when we bought that it was almost scrap material at that point in time so we completely refurbished the whole thing from scratch to become a new boat that is still running today for 17 years this is the charai dev one exactly and how did you happen upon these names i mean what do what do they mean so charido and all the names is related to the ahom kingdom of assam so charido and sukapa they all related to the ahom kingdoms and with the spots where we are also visiting it was the name of the first king i believe of the ahom kingdom and raj mahal on the ganges is of course iconic to bengal let's talk about a typical cruising experience and how uh, these experiences are laid out here's a little glimpse of the brahmaputra cruise i mean how does that uh, how does that look like and what is it that people can do even to start with just describing the brahmaputra it is mighty in in every aspect of it it's a transboundary river flows into assam in india and then down into bangladesh and into the bay of bengal this wow. river gives in abundance and takes away in abundance as well but having it been so close to home where we are at in assam we wanted to start here even though in the world's map of course iconic ganges is known a lot more in comparison to the brahmaputra but we felt that it could really relate to the sense of adventure and expedition as we wanted it to be so we wanted to focus on the riverine communities and all the variety of indigenous tribal communities that we have we have more than eight indigenous tribal communities in assam alone and they're all dotted along the river so the river gives you an access to discover assam away from the road and the traffic the what nature has given assam in abundance i've been at the foothills of the eastern himalayas and assam alone having five national parks out of which two of them are unesco world heritage sites 
and of course 18 wildlife reserves river crosses all of these fantastic flora and fauna that we have of the eastern himalayas the unique biodiversity hotspot that northeast india is so to be able to touch the lives of many by including them in as part of the river experience and visiting and learning about the culture and their lifestyle that they live off the river and the communities from there and the wildlife of course fantastic it's a fantastic what, adventure experience i know and what what more could you ask for there is wildlife there is cultural experiences and of course when your experience that is laid out to them and uh, is really fantastic so the two uh, expeditions on the brahmaputra the two parts to it right which you can yes. take it as seven seven nights which i thought was very unique to the uh, assam bengal navigation programs because it allows you to break uh, your journey so we what we initially thought that uh, starting in guwahati obviously because the airport is very well connected to the rest of india as well as singapore with juk air and bhutan so it was mm-hmm. a very good connecting point and then through going from guwahati upstream to kaziranga so you get the kaziranga experience as well when we had initially started we did orang national park and now we also do nameri national park the cruising route that used to go to orang national park and because of the river it changed course so we do not do that any longer so now we do nameri and kaziranga and the second leg of the journey because you're going upstream so you're going against the current so it takes a little longer uh, the second leg of the journey is kaziranga to majuli river island Machu. it's like a microcosm of assamese culture with a mix of uh, vaishnavite Hindu monasteries which is very special to that place and it's a very ubud kind of feel to it because everybody is only in cycles there's hardly any transportation around and vehicles and stuff so it's it's a very beautiful natural experience and then we do a downstream journey which is 10 night so we coming back and doing all the whole leg coming back to guwahati and in fact our british clientele and being a indo british company as well we started our main clientele have always been the british because they're well acquainted with this area they like to do two weeks on the brahmaputra because they just love the experience of it all the uh, floating hotel that you have uh, it also allows you to create an immersion around the majuli island right so do you break your journey or you take the floating hotel separately what we have thought to do was that our first ship avian chirido 1 the heritage vessel because she is much older so we want to keep her docked and get Yet have people be able to experience her, as well as the same would act as a base to discover Majuli River Island, Ullak Gibbon Sanctuary, where you can do a morning walking safari to see the Indian apes, and also to be able to visit the old Ahom Kingdom capital, where we have a lot of archaeological sites, Assam palaces, old temples, and it's just a beautiful little experience of what it used to be back in the day. Just to describe the experience on the ship. it's very stylish even in its simplicity was a lot of uh, you know local uh, elements that were featured i think that is very very unique to what the assam bengal navigation ships we we didn't want to do what the rest of beautiful india has to offer we had to bring out what it meant to be in assam and what it meant to be in bengal so like i say it was meant to reflect a sense of home coming to the region so in assam we have a very simplistic way of elegance in everything of our aesthetic style so we use a lot of bamboo a lot of hand woven textiles we have a lot of unique artifacts of woodwork in this region so floating hotel avian chirido 1 has bamboo paneled walls everywhere and it gives you a feel of a an expedition ship but like a small barge vessel similar to an asian river boat style So it's a collection of antiques. We've gone into the villages of Bengal and got the tribal artifacts from there, and all of the design gives you a little bit more of a regal feel. But yet it is simple and it feels homecoming. Whereas the newest vessel, we've done a little spin where it's a lot more boutique, a lot more plush in comparison to our older style of the boats. So here we are reflecting the colonial tea planter lifestyle of Assam. Let's talk a little bit about the cuisine. There's a, a lot of attention uh, and detail paid to cuisine. One of them being tribal cuisines that again uh, extremely special and not often found, right? Well, Assamese cuisine in general is much more simplistic with less oil. We have 101 different green leafy vegetables that we use in our cooking, and that's uh, presented with. Of course, we love uh, the different kinds of meats. 
that we have here and all prepared with bamboo shoots and tea leaves sometimes and even yes. the elephant apple so there's a lot of mix of cuisine that not not many people have even thought to realize that it is indian cuisine so that is in a culinary experience for us indians to be able to experience here as well for everywhere else be looking at uh, pumpkin flowers and things like that yes absolutely there's one fennel creek leaf that is just available everywhere let's now talk about the cruise on the ganges what's that cruise like and uh, inspiration uh, behind that cruising and what are the elements that you have included into it, the experiences uh, on the ganges so um in comparison to the brahmaputra obviously the ganges is you know a revered iconic river for everybody so keeping that in mind when we started we purposely started with calcutta going upstream because the hooghly river that the same lower ganges called the hooghly in bengal okay. had so much colonial history to cover and being dotted with old monuments that have been that have not been discovered by many these beautiful cities little towns villages and the river itself being very narrow you get to see life on both sides and the ganges river is incredibly um, especially just after the monsoon so it's a fantastic experience and we thought that the colonial history aspect of historic hooghly itinerary as we call it had a lot to offer in terms of a cultural immersion but of course we wanted to conquer going up all the way upstream to the upper ganges but we found out very soon that the water levels in on the ganges have a huge issue so we decided that the winter months were not cut out to go all the way to the upper ganges it's just not a comfortable experience so we stuck to offering that but only in the months of august and september when the water levels were high enough so the varanasi to patna that cruise is an incredible once in a lifetime experience yeah, absolutely with nalanda and banaras you know looking at banaras from the river side i think it would just be the most awesome uh, in september we do four departures then and we're covering all the highlights of varanasi we're docked in front of bramnagar palace so you're waking up to the to palace the from your bedroom window we we cruise the varanasi ghats and you get to see the iconic ghats come to life in the morning when it is at Beautiful. its best the lower ganges area you actually traverse um, Uh, different colonial uh, places right it's not only the british colonized uh, cities you're also looking at the french and the dutch cause and the danish so you look at that and of course the temples in kalna and the iskon temple in, in mayapur i mean and then the murshidabad area so this whole uh, ambit i mean look at how much you pack in into this uh, particular itinerary That's the other thing i really appreciated was your guides were fantastic right so they were they great storytellers very engaging right and um, you know and also very very sensitive to people's interests which is uh, which is something uh, really amazing so you we have raj mahal on the yeah. ganges right so uh, uh, just talking about the whole comfort and the luxury element of the ship in in comparison to the river ships around the world like say on the nile how would you compare the comfort and the luxury levels of the ships that we operate i would um, like to stress on the fact that they have been purposely kept small and intimate in size because yes. that really creates an ambiance of adventure amongst your fellow travelers who are equally interested otherwise a bigger boat with more people you are not able to manage the dynamics of the whole experience and then of course in terms of the specs of the ship the cabins we have purposely used french balcony windows that are extremely panoramic but not having a balcony front has helped us make the cabin even bigger in size So our two newer ships we have much bigger cabin sizes than most river cruising ships worldwide. So okay. that is a very spacious cabin, very nice spacious bathroom Views. as well. Uh, yeah. On uh, of a uh, ship size of course. I mean how have you seen the cruise market evolve in the last 17 years since you all started? We with the help of our partner Andrew Brock who obviously knew people in the industry being in the travel industry himself. in the uk and uk having the closest affinity to india yes. we approached the bigger river cruising companies in the uk that took a chance on us and have been continuing with us for the past 17 years 
and have been very loyal in terms of experience and growing every year. When we started in the UK, it gained a lot of popularity back then, and then slowly we expanded on to Europe. So we have different uh, language speaking markets in Europe. Japanese TV come and feature us, do a one hour long TV feature Fantastic. on our Brahma Putra cruises back in the day. So that yeah. was um, a special kind of experience with Japan as well. And we were rewarded as a top travel experience back then for the Japanese market. Wow. So slowly but surely we have expanded over the years, but it has largely been due to word of mouth recommendations. Absolutely. Because uh, we have not gone out hard and fast into the international market. It has been through companies that have worked with us, who've told other companies about it. And then us having approached them, then they really like the concept and we build something together. And then we want to develop these relationships with the like-minded companies. So we've had a slow but organic growth over the years. Uh, let's talk about the sustainable and uh, responsible best practices that a Sam Bengal navigation uses that ensures that these rivers are not only safe, they're also kept clean. We don't inundate it with more pollution than there, or there already is. Okay. Towards the cities, as the typical population yeah. comes in, uh, interface with the river, it is uh, becomes polluted, but not in comparison to the Ganges. Ganges suffers a lot, due to which we have to be extra cautious on the water and safety hygiene that we are providing for our guests. Because of which we have uh, a waste treatment plant on board and we have a water treatment plant that is necessary and we also carry our own water on board. Wow. So we have gallons and gallons of water that we carry with us that you see on the Raj Mahal, especially because of the Ganges. And then for the water treatment plants that is reused for the, the shower and then treated and put back for the basic usage of water. Just to be extra safe on the Ganges, we do recommend our guests, especially our foreign travelers, to use our clean filtered water even to brush their teeth and like just basic things, just to be extra safe because the Ganges and it is that much more polluted than the Brahmaputra, for example. But the community is actively involved in your operation, so that is the other thing. When we first embarked on this idea, we were conscious of the fact that we wanted to involve the local communities because we are visiting their homes and suddenly these villagers are seeing foreign guests and uh, people coming into their homes from the river. So if you're not forming a win-win bond with them, where we go there, employ them, they see the benefit that they are yeah. receiving from it and understand that it is not an intrusion. It is a respectable relationship that we're forming with each other, yes. where the foreign guests are learning about them and they are learning about a different culture that is coming in. All keeping in mind that it has to be with respect for one another. Yeah, that's so absolutely, yeah. because of which we have uh, gone out and handpicked people from the villages, especially the ones that we're visiting, because that also gives us a much more intimate experience because as our guides or as our local crew is visiting the villages, they get, our guests get invited to all of these um, extra special festivals festivals or, yeah in, in individual yeah. villages yeah yes and then we get to know what's happening that day if there is a little you know a little political i i you know uh gathering and somebody's wedding or the rhino came into the village or the yeah. elephant came in and we get to hear all of the little tidbits of the lovely day. stories yeah the captain of the ship uh, just like in normal lodges and retreats where the hostess or the owner kind of really forms the crux of the experience what about the captains on these ships what is their uh, story i mean how do they relate with the guests and what is the experience that they uh, put out the captains of the ship and the engineers and such have to be trained by the Indian Waterways Authority of India. They have years of experience and training on the two particular rivers. Okay. So they are local to Assam and local to Bengal. So wow. they knew the river before even going on the cruise with us because they were trained on the river. And then the because we have a good relationship with them and with the captains in particular, stayed on as and when we started the cruises. Do they function as the manager of the ship or you know, do they interact with, with the guests? They do, absolutely. At the welcoming session in the evening when we have with our guests, we make sure to introduce everybody 
and as well as the farewell session we get to introduce everybody and they have a one on one with all of the guests in between if the guests wish to go visit he has to be on his uh, position in, in the captain's wheel house uh, they get to go meet him in person as well because we've developed a very good relationship with them and they know what we are trying to do as a company for on these two rivers they have slowly opened up and broken out of their shyness and they are very happy to be able to greet the guests covid has been tough on uh, on everybody in the tourism industry and one of the things i always quote antara and i just found it extremely um, timely that in one of your newsletters where you mentioned that uh, when fishermen don't go out to fish they sit back and uh, mend their nets which is a kind of metaphor i use all the time and this is something that i really took to heart and this is what we did as a company this is what we did we we mentored and we reached out we learned new things and you know this is what we've been doing and we really re refashioned our business uh, knowing that everything is now online and everything we really uh, reassembled our uh, our creative thoughts and our creativity to be up to date with what is current and present and one of the things was to always be able to show all our partners such as yourself Uh, out there promoting you to the market also showing them how you are unfazed by strife and how you and your teams are really working at uh, you know creating value and content even in these uh, times knowing that the indian traveler will be in focus uh, and also creating a strategy for them uh, it is it is wonderful to have these short cruises that you have planned uh, and it'll be good uh, to quickly talk about it because i think for the indian traveler for whom seven night expeditions might be too long uh, the shorter ones would can create a lot of interest and idea and also as a celebration when they are there i think that will be really interesting we have created series for the brahmaputra and one for the ganges so i'll start with the ganges which is called the bengal memories because here we are covering the highlights really of the historic hooghly itinerary that we usually do because we're covering all of the old colonial towns so you have the influences of all you get to have a um stroll in these little towns and see the iconic buildings and monuments from that time and for example in chandanagor the old french colony you get to visit uh, duplay's house the french governor general of back in the day where they also have a little museum with a beautiful old collection a small collection but still relative to uh, the colonial history and then we are visiting the terracotta temples of kalna the 108 shiva concentric circles we are visiting iskon epicenter which is a site that you cannot miss because they have built a temple that is similar to saint peter's basilica in the vatican if not bigger so it is an iconic site that you're not able to imagine but here you get to go visit it and learn about the iskon center that has brought people from all around the world who have given up their lives abroad and have come and settled down in mayapur in a small little village in bengal including that is just a three night introduction to the lower ganges so you have a narrow river where you get to see life on both sides from your bedroom you don't even have to step out if you don't feel like it or you get to go relax on the 360 degree panoramic sun deck where you get to see life on both sides and if you choose to do an activity you get to step out or you can just sit in a very comfortable boutique ship yeah and just the sheer romance of cruising you know of river cruising Absolutely. which is so so much special one of the other things i wanted to highlight here is that people can actually uh, groups and families can literally buy out uh, Uh, the the ship for themselves right absolutely the two programs on the guwahati the short programs on yeah. uh, the, the brahmaputra we have three nights itinerary starting in guwahati and going all the way just before kaziranga because uh, you're not able to stop anywhere near kaziranga national park be in a national park so we are covering in these three nights little villages along the way um, and also just the idea is to be able to relax on the river beautiful boutique ship enjoy your spa treatments and enjoy the gym on board as it expands of the river and its natural beauty and within that as part of the in-house activities that we have designed we are doing little indigenous tribal cooking sessions we are doing tea tasting sessions of assam tea of we get to learn a lot about the tribes of assam and of northeast india and all yeah. of the 
nature and flora and fauna that it has to offer. So it's it's really like an introduction to the river. And of course, um, I must not forget the offshore activities where we're visiting um, Tespur, we're visiting Nameri National Park and um, yeah, some villages along the river and as well as the Kamakya River, which is a tantric temple. For Indian travelers, it could be something very, very uh, special and very different from what they have. And because of the small size of the ships, there's the opportunity to really uh, buy out the inventory and c customize it and make it yours for a certain period of time. For celebrations, again, they are very, very beautiful. I would love to add to that is that what we have intentionally done is We've kept the river cruise itineraries for the Brahma Puja short and focused on the river. Whereas the second one with four nights is including not just the beauty and the expanse of the river along with the in-house activities and the river cruising experience, but we're also visiting Majuli River. Majuli. Yes. Yes. But and then I have intentionally kept the wildlife aspect of it out because logistically we need to wake up at five o'clock in the morning and travel and then go spend the day out. So we just thought to keep the wildlife aspect of it out and if they wanted to extend it, they can include a wildlife experience in Kaziranga National Park. You have the uh, you have the lodge, the Tiflu River Lodge where they can exactly. uh, stay, which is the closest to the National Park, right? Exactly. Yeah, that's uh, really great. Um, uh, Antara, it's been lovely talking to you. Uh, just uh, out of curiosity, what other markets are interested in uh, uh, in uh, are starting to look at uh, the cruises, uh, yeah. the river cruises. So our, our primary markets is definitely all of Europe. Okay. All okay. of Europe, especially Northern Europe, uh, and as well as Australia. And then okay. we do have few partners that we work with in America, but uh, that is not our primary market. Is it also possible to pick up, uh, you know, 18 or 18 or 22 uh, cabin uh, river boats for a retreat, like a? Is there enough space, like a meditation retreat, like a yoga retreat? Absolutely. That would be ideal if they want to do the river cruising experience. Otherwise, it is also possible to do that with our floating hotel, which is a stand alone where you get to add on many such experiences. With the river cruising experience, I think um, we have to keep to the river schedule because obviously the river has much more control over us than we do the river uh, yeah. but I, it is very flexible as well so we can build in um, experiences within it otherwise a floating hotel is an option and I must take this opportunity to also mention our houseboats for yes. a private sailing experience uh, with an adventure element to it so the upper Assam where the bigger ships are not able to cruise up to we have our smaller houseboats so a one cabin houseboat and also we are introducing a two cabin houseboat mm -hmm. where uh, you get to have a small group of friends or family travel together. We have cycles on board. You, it's entirely bespoke, so you get to experience the foothills of Arunachal Pradesh and Nagaland and really be able to tie that on uh, with cycling and uh, maybe even camping out on deserted sandbanks under the stars where we have Sounds our really idyllic. bonfire and sundowners at as well. And especially in the winter, it is truly an incredible experience. And in Upper Assam, the Brahmaputra River is crystal clear. And waking up to the Eastern Himalayas and your backdrop is, um, is truly magical, if I may say so myself. Thank you so much, Antara. That was really enlightening. And I can't wait to get out and, uh, you know, I mean, I, especially this, um, uh, this private cruising and adventure seems really uh, something else. Uh, and like you said, it is really magical. Uh, thank you everyone for listening and thank you Antara for this lovely conversation with you. Uh, the effort is to keep India and keep feeding you with lots of ideas to explore this beautiful country and also ideas from the subcontinent that you can all explore. Kudos for all the great work that you have done. Um, best wishes on World Tourism Day. This is an initiative that Assam Bengal Navigation has created and you really need, need to be a big salute to you, your team, your teams, your parents who have, uh, you know, really pioneered this idea and uh, to look at India from another lens, from being on the banks of the river looking in to being on the river and looking out into the towns and cities and little villages, I think is a magical experience everybody must explore.